Hello, welcome back to Phoenix Wright Justice for All. <sighs> it's past 9 o'clock p.m. already, isn't it? I wonder. I wonder if Esther Edgeworth has already found Mystic Maya. Esther Edgeworth, uh, <laughs> these things take time. I say probably not. The police are professionals, girls. They'll find her, so don't you worry. And if we can win a not guilty verdict tomorrow, then everything will be okay. You're right. So the real person who killed Mr. Corridor was... That assassin, Mr. Shelly Killer. And the card contains who's found at the crime scene seems to be proof of that. But if that's the case, then the question comes to mind. Who was the one that hired to kill Mr. Jacobs? Who is this client? That person didn't want to dirty their own hands and blood. But whoever this client is, they're still a killer. The assassin's client. Who? Who could have hired the assassin? Do you think it was Mr. Andrews? I wonder. But if she was the client, then why go through the effort to stab the knife into the corpse herself? But if Miss Andrews wasn't the client, then... No, it can't be. Matt and Guard himself. Was it Matt? If Mr. Agard really didn't hire the assassin, then he is not innocent at all. Far from it. He would be guilty of the crime. But it can't be Mr. Agard, right? I mean, we will be first to with him. Mr. Agard, I'd like to ask you one more question. Did you kill Mr. Juan Carrillo? Alright, just so we're clear, dude. I didn't kill anyone, and that includes Juan Carita. Okay. I don't. What? <laughs> did, did he do it or not? <laughs> I didn't see any Cyclops at that time. Actually, that reminds me. Did you remember something, Mr. Nick? Yeah, something Miss Andrew said at the trial today. She said something interesting. Something interesting. Um, so what is this interesting thing? Oh, that's right. You didn't hear it, did you? Guard's secret? What, what is this secret? I don't know yet. But for now, let's think about it this way. Mr. Corridor was going to reveal this secret. That means... Mr. Guard had plenty of motive to have Mr. Corridor silenced. Which means we have to use Mr. Rengard. There's no way around it now. It's really getting late, isn't it, Mr. Nick? Yeah, it's past 9 o'clock p.m. already. But we still have some things to prepare for tomorrow's trial. There's still the matter of this secret Mr. Corrida held about Mr. Regard. And Miss Andrew's real intentions. These are two things I must know tonight. But aren't visiting hours over at the detention now, Senator? Hmm. I'm sure we'll think of something for us. Don't you worry. Well, you know, that gossip that's been going around about my dear Juan. 
Oh, do you mean that thing about Miss Angels? But I'm sure she must have had some reason for getting close to Mr. Porter. Oh, you don't know the secret, don't you? I know who planted that spy camp. It was an obnoxious, puffy haired photographer girl. There were some people spy on people by herself, as if I wouldn't want to see it for myself, too. Wow, well, the alien actually admitted her true intentions for a change. I don't know what you're thinking exactly, but I can get that that's something good. <laughs> but I didn't say anything. Oh, uh, maybe? She wants to know about why? That manager, right? Actually, as I hear it, there was something of a refreshing thing that was I tell you, Juan really welcomed that manager with open arms. around. Oh, what happened to that person with the stuffed teddy face? Oh, she must mean that butler with the stitches in his face. Shoo! Oh, there you are! I guess you're still awake, aren't you? Come on, let's play. I wonder if that butler, Mr. Doe, is already asleep or not. something happened. You're Mr. Regard's lawyer, right? Uh, yes, sir. Well, we finally found just the person we've been looking for. A real decisive witness. Decisive witness? You mean for the authorities? We're taking the witness station right now. We've got to hand it to Mr. Edgeworth. What's Edgeworth up to now? Who is this witness? I think you know who this person is. I think you know this person quite well, Mr. Lawyer. 
Twister? It's waiting for kidnappers to win. I can't see any way to win here. Oh, yeah. Mr. Edward wanted me to tell you something. He did. Even though visiting hours are all over, I think he's actually sad. He wanted me to pray for special permission, so there you go. What? I've already called them, so they know. Go on. Go talk to her. It's good. Thank you very much. This is such good news, Mr. Nate. Talk to your heart tonight. Sounds like the police are pretty sure they have tomorrow's trial in the bag. Oh, I'm sure they must have transferred Miss Andrews here by now. So that means that both Mr. Ungar and Miss Andrews are in this detention center. Now then, whose story do I want to hear? Do Matt first. Matt and Dude, it's Mr. Wright. I hope you can get me off the hook tomorrow. Yeah. I hope so too. Edward just dropped by a bomb sh just dropped a bombshell on me by saying uh, that Juan Carrillo was killed by an assassin and that the assassin's client is this man, Matt and Garth. What's wrong? Mr. Ungar, there's something I must know with 100% certainty. You kind of different. You're totally not like your usual lawyer to yourself. Matt Seaton, um, about the press conference. You mean the one where the one was gonna dress up as the Nickel Stammer? Yeah, I heard a little more about it from Miss Andrews. Looks like somehow. Fill me in on what the secret is, please. I knew this was coming. Mr. Dick, tell tell me. It's like walks. He said the secret was great, but I don't have any idea what it is. Do you do? Uh, one meeting. Did you know about Mr. Corda and Mr. Well, it's all over the tablets, dude. Uh, I don't know any of the details. That's what you mean. Look, how many times do I have to tell you? I don't care what Juan did with these one. Miss Andrews, she had a purpose in mind when she started seeing Mr. Corridor. Her mentor was Mr. Corridor's manager. And Miss Andrews was going to get Miss Celeste in fact a suicide note from Miss Celeste. Does that jog any memories? I suddenly just got totally hungry. You're for a pizza. My treat. Oh, um, Mr. D. What's that pizza? Is it a kind of pizza like your pizza? Let's go eat one later, okay? Uh, I got cut off by the pizza dude at the shop. That's too bad. Well, how about we get our minds off of this topic and talk about something else, okay? Mr. Guard. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> Stern guard? Dude, I know I asked you to be my lawyer. Man. I don't think I have to tell you anything and everything. Um, what do you mean by that? It just means I don't have to tell you anything. It doesn't look like Mr. Scuffy Detective is here. Oh, he's out there with that camera asking around at all the electronic stores. Then I'll make some salad for him for dinner. Looks like Pearls really appreciates what Dumbshoe is doing for us. Um, Mr. Nick? Where's the lettuce? I don't think I've ever bought a lettuce before. Oh, uh, I guess I have to give up on making a salad then. Guess the lack of lettuce is kind of a problem. Oh, no! <laughs> lettuce! 
das Herbord ist. <lacht> You have to help me. Uh oh. Or Mr. Powers. What happened? Why are you here? I, I, uh, you see, I got roped into this somehow. What? And now I'm going to testify tomorrow's struggle. So the decisive witness is Mr. Powers. I was talking with the detective until a little while ago, and I was on my way home. And all of a sudden, you there, you're under arrest, and I was brought back here. Uh oh. They said my face in the whole Belton General was suspicious or something. Well, I guess I can see how they thought you looked suspicious. <laughs> I'm just a normal guy at an exercise show for kids. Is that a crime? Uh, as far as testimony? <laughs> so, about this testimony? Here, here, what are you going to talk about? Uh, I really don't know yet. It sounds like I saw something pretty important from what they tell me. You saw something important? What was it? Uh, well, the detective told me not to talk about it. <coughs> oh. Can't tell anyone, especially not that one. <coughs> oh, he said. Oh, who do you think is that lawyer the detective was talking about? Oh, I'm going to take a wild guess and say it's me. Yeah, you got it. Mr. Nick. Mr. Maya and myself are your only two allies in this whole world, but it's alright. Ouch, I don't really have a lot of friends, do I? I'm guard. This is going to do a lot of damage to Matt, you know? Because he's got that refreshing, like, spring breeze in his going. But what is he really like? Well, it's, that's always been kind of a player, but... You never really turn a pretty face away, you know what I mean? He always said it's just a game to justify himself. How horrible! That's unforgivable! Oh, I'm just so sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. But you know, he said once that there's only one person in the world who won't swoon over me. One person who wouldn't swoon over? His manager, you know. Miss Adrian Andrews. Why is Mr. Power suddenly kind of energetic? Gossip. Uh, you see, I'm actually a sucker for golf. I mean, celebrities in their world have this dazzling sort of image, right? Dazzling sort of image? But aren't you a part of that dazzle, Mr. Powers? No, well, I'm more of a hairy, sweaty, smelly, British kind of guy, you see. But it's okay, really. I get to hear plenty of gossip about a lot of the other stars around me as things happen. Well, that's true. Oh, hey, so did you hear about this yet? About Miss Andrews and her and her suicide? You mean Miss Andrews? You heard something about how her wedding was canceled? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I thought about it a little the other day, about that mysterious death. Hey, Mr. Wright, why don't you ask me about that? Go on, go ahead. Mr. Powers is so charged up, his skin is practically glowing with electricity. So that's your phone. Hey, so have you heard this? Celeste left a suicide note. And they say that Vaughn went and hit it. You heard about that in court today. There wasn't any actual proof that she had left a note. Well, this is what I think. I think that something bad was written on that note. Something bad for Vaughn, that is. Something bad for Mr. Corrida? Why do you figure so? Well, before she died, Celeste talked with a few of her friends. And she said, It looks like I got caught up with a truly insidious man. Truly insidious man? Did she made Mr. Corrida by that? Well, there's no one else that fits the bill, right? And that would be the reason enough for him to hide the suicide note. You see, well, that's some good info. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Andari and Miss Andrews are both at the detention center right now. There are still things I don't understand at all, I'm not sure. I have to get the two of them to tell me everything. Adrian Andrews. Oh, it's you. I'm 
sorry to be listening at such a late hour, but there are a few questions I absolutely have to ask you tonight. Me? I thought your client was mad. I'm sure Miss Andrews knows something. She can't be clueless about the secret Mr. Corridor had on Mr. Regard. Matt Regard, I'd like to ask you about Matt Regard, if you don't mind. Mr. Wright, you still don't know, do you? The real him, I mean. You seem to bear a lot of resentment towards Mr. Regard. If that's the case, why did you become his manager? And why would you become intimate with his rival? That has nothing to do with this case. Nothing. Celestin Pax. About Miss Celestin Pax. I finally put her death behind me. And now, thanks to you, it's all come back to the surface. I, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, I was shocked by her suicide. It's true that when I heard the rumor that Vaughn was the one who had hidden her suicide note, I began to draw close to him. I wanted to get her suicide note back, and to burn it. You wanted to burn it? But why? I didn't want it to spread like just another piece of gossip. But I never held any humorous intent towards one. I would never do something so stupid. A suicide note. Hmm. I wonder what it said. Why frame him? Why did you try to frame Mr. Regard? That's simple. Because he's the killer, that's why. Isn't it the duty of every good citizen to inform the police? But there had to be another way. The police are excellent at doing their job, so they figure it out, right? Yes, they're so good that they couldn't figure out the real truth behind Celeste's death. Miss Andrews. Well, um, I know you're not the type of person to do something without a reason, so please tell me why you did what you did. really soon. What's wrong? Something really unexpected just happened. Mr. Edgeworth. He... Edgeworth? Anyway, hurry up and get back to the office, pal. I don't know what's going on anymore. It's no good. The end. I... Oh, well, he got cut off. What's going on, Mr. Nick? Gumshoe said we need to go back to the office right away. But then we should hurry back. I'm scared to go back. What are you talking about? Pull yourself together. Maybe it'll be good news. Somehow, I doubt that. Ugh. What took you so long, pal? Mr. Edgeworth couldn't stick around forever and had to go. Well, what happened? We got him. We know who bought that spy kit. This quickly? And this bear is what gave them away, pal. Bear. I figured it out, pal. I figured that we should have been looking to the bear instead of the camera. Oh, but wasn't it Mr. Edgeworth that had the Shh, girls. And go on. <laughs> go on. <laughs> There's only one person who bought one of those bears who's related to this crime. Who is it? Who would be so good as to spy on another person in their room? Matt and Guard. Huh? That's her code. Here I thought things could have been worse. Uh, what's up there? Are you sure you heard right? That the person who bought this bear was... I heard it from the department store clerk, pal. 
This is the color card receipt for the purchase. It's for $3,800. That's the exact match to the price of that stuff. The receipt. That's all you have? Yeah, it's not just the receipt. No, the store clerk says so so. He told me. Uh, 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 excuse me. <laughs> I'm sure she'll sold the bear to Mr. Regard. I mean, the clerk even got Mr. Regard's autograph out of the hell. So I'm sure the person that bought the stuff there was Mr. Regard himself. Site is failing. This, this can't be. The bike camera. So, what about this bike camera we found? Uh, that was a dead end. No, I need to get this kind of thing from anywhere. But for now, I guess I can get this back to you for the file. To file. To you for you. To file away into evidence. I know you don't want to give up, pal. I never thought it. I didn't think it was possible. The person who put the spy camera in Juan Carita's room was Matt and Guard. Why? Why would Mr. and Guard do something like this? I bet it was to catch Mr. A Ms. Andrews and Mr. Corita in one of their rendezvous. I bet is not good enough for me. I have to know the absolute truth behind this camera. Are you going to see him? Mr. and Guard, I mean. Yes. I'm, I'm scared, Mr. Nick. I wonder, I wonder what we will find out next. I'm scared myself, but I have to put on a good face for pearls. Matt and Gar, what in the world have you done? You're working really late, you know? It's already past 10 o'clock p.m., dude. I think it's time you told me the truth. Relax. Don't you know that ignorance is bliss? But if you really want to know, let's talk. Okay. Save. Probably do it now. present from a fan. I guess Juan had a few of those kind of fans too. Huh? Actually, I would say this bear was a present from a fan. Sure, dude. Who else could it be from? The person who gave this bear to Mr. Corey was.
think I have this yet. picture of a shell. Uh, um, that's it? Oh, yeah, that's right. Mr. Edgeworth really likes those cooked snail things. Um, what are they called again? Escargot or something like that? Mr. Dick, I think we just solved the mystery of why Mr. Edgeworth's face turned pale, right? As I suspect you, I'm not sure it's not good. Thank <laughs> you. 
Stone Guard. Don't you know this bear from somewhere? I don't think I've ever met Mr. Bear before, do you? Oh, but he says he knows you. How could you forget such a great friend? What else did the bear tell you? He says that the one who put the camera in his eye was you, Mr. Rengard. I didn't know how you were in court. I think I was in some serious trouble. Come on, this is all a joke. Great dude, you're just pulling my leg. Looks like you're not ready to give up your secret yet. Well, do you have any proof you want to show me? Here's proof that it was you who put the camera in his eye. Okay, uh, uh, that one makes sense. I have here one credit card receipt, Mr. Rickman. It's from when you bought that stuffed bear. Dude, all you can tell from this is that I spent $3,800. I go to that department store all the time, okay? This $3,800. This could be the toothbrush I bought that one time. A $3,800 toothbrush? <laughs> it's ivory, and it's got elephant hair for bristles. Ew. Elephant hair? Is that what rich people use nowadays? Anyway, the store clerk query remembers you and your purchase. After all, you even gave him an autograph, did you not? Dude, you should have said that earlier. Oh, um, so can I ask you one thing? Yes. You're my lawyer, right, dude? So if you are, then why are you looking into stuff like that? Because if I don't know the truth, I can't help you. Sounds more like a stupid lawyer to talk to me. Hey, let's stop talking about this, okay? No, not yet. I haven't asked why you set the camera up yet. And what your secret is. Of course, it will be strictly confidential. So, what are you going to do now? I'm going to find out what I want to know. Because I must. The reason you hit this camera in this storage room and filmed it in secret is... on Mr. Corda. You were going to reveal this as fact and turn it into a scandal. Isn't that right? Dude, you can be such a moron. Huh. Oh man, Mr. Lawyer, dude. That kind of scandal. That's the good stuff. That's what we in the industry call juicy. The good stuff? Juicy? Look, we can get publicity without spending a penny with that kind of stuff. I mean, if people stop paying attention to us, then it'd be the end, dude. Too bad that wasn't your intention. What are you talking about? I wish your reason for spying was something so innocent, but it wasn't. You didn't spy Mr. Corio because of Miss Andrews. Then there's only one reason I can think of for you to such a thing. The real reason you said about that camera in Mr. Corio's room. certain man's calling card. The man's name is Shelly. And I'm sure you know it. Don't. Shelly. That's ridiculous. But why would I know some shady scumbag like him? If you really don't know him, then why are you acting so dumb for all this Um, this is it. I'm finally starting to get to the truth. I can't afford to make any more mistakes now. You're mad. You are. I know why you know this truth, though. It's because... Since you were the one who set up that camera, that means you knew. You knew exactly what was going to happen in that room. So, how? How would you know something like that? It's because you were his client. That's why. You hired Shelly to kill her to assassinate Mr. Juan Carrillo, the real mastermind behind this whole murder. It's you, Matt and Guard. 
here I was, trying to be a good boy for you, dude. I thought if you didn't know, you'd be able to do your job without feeling bad. Well, that's what I thought I had to do. Mr. Guard, you really did hire me. Well, I said, I'm gonna consult myself, okay? Consult myself? Well, I guess it's probably about time anyway. About time for what? I think it's time for you to meet him now, Mr. Lawyer, dude. How do you do, Mr. Lawyer? I'm Matt and Guard. your eye. That's secret. <laughs> well done, Mr. Randy. I bet it wasn't easy to gather as much information as you had. Really, so you are silly to kill this client. You didn't really think I would do my own hands in this, did you? What do you mean? And that woman, Adrian, was quite brave herself. Trying to stick the crime with me. I didn't think she had to do it. But all I care about is that plot is dead. Isn't that really Mr. Lawyer? Then yes, you're lying. What a terror. It's way past your bedtime, little girl. Go on, and let us grow up talking about more adult things. But why? Why do you hide the video camera in it? The weakling soon released the words of others, just like that pathetic Adrian. He knew about this Andrew's secret, but I'm no weakling. I don't do it anyway. We of all assassins. What? Oh, well, come now, Mr. Wright. Assassins aren't above black belt. They turn their clients into cash cows by holding the safe over their hands. That's And a superstar like me, how much do you think I'm worth? Cured yes. And, and that's why? Yes, that's where the video comes in. It's got his face and the crime scene recorded on it, preserved for all time. With that, I can keep that big, and even black men. That's right, that video is my insurance. Isn't that what they call it, Mr. Reed? Why would you do something so wrong? Because I'm a girl, and I can. Good enough of an answer for you to go Motive for murder? Why? Why would you kill Mr. Corridor? Because he was about to steal me so much dung onto my beautiful public image. Scandals are a little annoying, aren't they? This is all because of that press conference, isn't it? If Mr. Corrida had been able to get in, then Mr. Rengard's secret would have... Uh, well, that's what we call taking a dent in the situation, you know. I had no interest in doing it, really. But bit by bit, it crept up on me. And then the situation just presented itself perfectly. How beautiful, I thought. And that's... that's how Mr. Corrida ended up dead. Let me tell you something. I'm not like Adrian. I don't depend on anyone. People are simply things to be used, used and thrown away. Put on a sweet, innocent face, and people will swallow anything you feed Adrian felt for it, the assassin too. Oh, and how can I forget? Even you felt for it, Mr. Lawyer. Everyone, all working their butts off for me. Matt and God. Oh, did that leave you speechless? What a shame. What's wrong, Mr. Lawyer? You've grown awfully quiet. How could I have been so deceived by you all this time? When we first met, I asked if you had killed Juan Correa. And you answered very clearly that you hadn't killed anyone. Hey, now, I never told you any lies. The person who did the killing was that the killer guy, right? All I'm guilty of is taking a cat nap in my room. You. You. You killed Mr. Correa. <laughs> I dare you to say that in court tomorrow. But too bad, you can't. You're my lawyer, after all, aren't you? You could always drop my case and refuse to represent me. How does that sound? Uh, but you can't, can you? That would be the one thing you absolutely can't do. What mystic Maya? You wouldn't want to test the killer. He's a man of his word, or so I hear. You could end up getting a certain friend of yours rubbed out if you lose. You, you... Scoundrel. So if I were you, Mr. Wright, Mr. Wright, I think I would give him my own tomorrow. Remember, everyone likes a happy win-win resolution. I'll get 
at you for this. It's such a cliche phrase. Wants it something just like that. His memory serves. Of course, well, we all know how well things turn out for him, don't we? Good night, Mr. Lawyer. Why? Why? What am I supposed to do? Now you finally found it. Starting the line of this case. Edgeworth. I don't care for the horrid atmosphere here. Let's return to the precinct. Well, right. What are you going to do? If you plan on changing your strategy. No! You can't do that. That's right. He's holding Maya hostage. What? What should I do? It's not something I can answer for you. Mr. Edgeworth! Right, only you can decide where to go from here. One year ago, at that time, I didn't truly understand what a prosecutor was. And that is why I had to leave the prosecutor's office. I felt that I couldn't stand in the court of law until I knew what a prosecutor really was. And now, right, it's your turn. I do. What is this thing called a lawyer? What can you do as well? You must find the answer. You must find it on your own. I'm sorry. I'm a lawyer. But to fight for someone who is clearly a killer. I'm sorry. That man is ruined. It doesn't matter who. Every person deserves a proper defense and a fair trial. Isn't that the basis of our judicial system? Proper defense? But what exactly is that? Is it where a lawyer forcibly is blindly gets an acquittal from shouting and triggering? Ironically, you of all people should say such a thing. Isn't that exactly how you have fought for your clients up until now? Uh, well, that may be true, but, but that's, that's because I believe my clients to be innocent from the bottom of my heart. But if I were to get the guard and acquittal, that, that isn't a proper defense at all. My situation. I became a lawyer because I thought I, thought I could save people who were suffering and in pain. But when I look at this mess we're in, I can't even protect the person closest to me. Even if I win the case, I still lose the man. I just don't know what to do. Right, you get a hold of yourself, you have it all wrong. Huh? We aren't some sort of heroes, we're only human. You want to save someone? That's something easier said than done, wouldn't you say? Th that's... You are a defense attorney. You can't run away from that. You can only fight. That's all you can do. Why fight? People like you and Francisco Bonkama are always using all you have to pin me down. You fight to the very end, even when you know the truth is not with you. But I'm not like you. I can't fight for a false verdict, for a man I clearly know to be guilty. Francisco, she fights for herself. The only thing she fights for is her perfect win. And, isn't that the same as you? Isn't that why you ran away a year ago? Because your precious wood record was destroyed? You were so petty. I see. Now I understand why you despise me so. However, you were mistaken. What do you Thanks to you, when you steal off my path to a perfect wood record, I began to realize the error of my ways. I realized that things such as a perfect record were meaningless. I don't believe you. Are you saying that is why you left the prosecutor's office? But then, why? Why are you here now? The answer to that is something you will find out on your own. I have faith you will see it before the verdict is read tomorrow. But if you can't, then you will be powerless to change the ending of this story. Mr. Nick, Tracy. Sorry for what happened earlier. Now then, Mr. Attorney, do you wish me to continue with little tomorrow? My, my, what is the matter, Mr. Attorney? I don't sense your usual anger at this time. Tell me, please, why are you quoting my uncle's? Who is your eyes sick? Why are you, why are you doing this for that cold-blooded killer? Right. Please don't misunderstand things. 
on the bottom. Don't play with me. A man who hires an assassin is just as much of a killer himself. I believe you are asking me for a reason as to why I'm dealing with what I am. Yeah. This is what I like to call my aftercare. What the heck is aftercare? My name carries a certain amount of honor. Transmission. Huh? Oh, that, it, it sounded like a cat. A cat? It can't be. That cat. Can it? What is it? Okay, I know where Shelly the Killer is holding my house. Ezra, have all police units head for our guard connection immediately. Alright, you hurry over as well now. Don't lose hope yet, girls. The fight is only just begun. Yeah! Leading out of 
with this district. Leave the rest to us. Maya. Oh, what is that? This looks like a picture of Miss Impax. Much love, Celeste. Miss Impax, you mean? Yes, Mr. Corridor's former manager. Why would a picture of Miss Impax be here in Mr. Ungar's mansion? And why does it say, with love? This might be a clue. Uh, what's wrong, Pearls? Please let me see that picture frame. Huh? What's so special about the frame? On the back. There's something written on the back of the frame. Maya. It's Mystic Maya. She left us a message. But what? later. actually just that. <laughs> so let's, there's only one catalyst that could cause such strong feelings and even revenge, and that is Miss Impact's suicide. Well, what are you trying to say? So that's just Juan's manager. On top of that, the one who's hit her suicide note was also Juan. What does all this have to do with me? You're right, you haven't mentioned it. But for you to hate Mr. Ingram, it would mean 
that he must have had some relation to this impact on his suicide. Can you explain to me this relation between Celeste and Hmm. Now, in a new picture. Take that! Okay. <laughs> this, this is a photo of Miss Impax, correct? She looks younger than when she passed away, though. With love, Celeste. This is Miss Impax's handwriting, isn't it? Where did you find this? No, it's alright. It was a rhetorical question. Yeah, it is. I found this at Mr. Ungard's mansion. And after all this time, my last remaining secret has been revealed. Hmm. Okay. Celeste, she was supposed to get married to one. Yes, but I heard that it didn't work out. Because Mr. Corda didn't want to get married to her anymore, right? Yes, because of Matt. Because of Mr. Ingar? What do you mean? I think I can see where this is going. Celeste, she was Matt's manager a long time ago. She was the happiest woman in the world. I was working part-time back then, and I often saw the two of them together. So that's why. It's more of Celeste's so written on the frame of that picture. They were a couple, weren't they? Like, they were a couple! Okay. It wasn't anything as splendid as that. Celeste was being used. Toy with until she was thrown away. That's so horrible. Matt's entire image is built around how nice and wonderful the mansion is. A scandal would have destroyed that. Which is why Celeste, in her kindness, moved over to Worldwide Studios. And that is where she met him. She seemed really happy with him, even happier than when she was with Matt. Celeste and Juan were such a good match that they were even planning to get married. And then, it was suddenly called off. On the night Juan called their marriage off, Celeste. She killed herself. And that's why I think there's revenge for Celeste and for myself. Revenge. I'm sure even you can guess why Juan called the wedding off, right? Matt confessed to Juan about his relationship with Celeste. I see. So that's what happened. But then why did Mr. Corda have to call off the wedding? I don't understand at all. It was probably because of his worthless male pride. Juan and Matt were always fierce rivals. Matt waited for the wedding announcement and then unleashed the truth on Juan. He was aiming for a wedding who would hurt Juan the most. Poor Mr. Pax. That wasn't the end of it. That day, I'm almost certain that Celeste left a suicide note behind. And in that note, she left a detail that count of Matt's various misdeeds and so she would never again be hurt by Matt. She chose to die. Then, when Juan discovered her body, he hit her butt. But why would he do that? It's simple. Juan realized that note was a powerful weapon against Matt, and it would be especially damaging to his refreshing like a spring breeze image. In any case, with his pride hurt, Juan sought revenge. Revenge. There's that word again. Juan wanted to publicly disclose the contents of that suicide note. At a time that would cause Matt the most damage, of course. And that was at the press conference after the stage show. I know all about it because I heard it all from Juan. It was so I could find out about all of this that I drew close to Juan to begin with. They're quite a pair of hideous monsters, aren't they? Even Celeste's death was something for them to use in their game. That night, when I found Juan's body, it was only natural that I thought the murderer was Matt. Those two were always spying on one another after all. And as for me, I was frantically searching for Celeste's suicide note. I wanted to destroy it before it ever went public. I was going to burn it. I had even brought a lighter. But I couldn't find a suicide note, and that's when your revenge crossed my mind. Yes, 
I was going to bring it so that might look kind of cool in a match. Celeste was killed by those two monsters. So when I stabbed Juan's body with that knife, I didn't feel a single shred of guilt. And that's all I have to say. Well, Mr. Wright, even knowing all this, are you still going to help? with me. It was no big deal. I couldn't sleep anyway. I can't sleep either. Not with my situation or with what I know now. Alright. Oh, they've had a bad history. Bye.